Hey everybody, I forgot to record today's uh, discussion in, in intensive physics, so um, forgive me th about that. But I'm going to make the, I'm making a video now to go over what what you missed. So I started off by asking students. Uh, we well, first of all, we we looked at uh, reminded ourselves of the universal gravity equation g m1 m2 over r squared, and if you remember one mass we call m1 or if one mass is particularly big you can make it be a capital m and then another mass uh, you can call that m2 or if it's a smaller mass you can make it be a, a smaller m uh, that is what m1 and m2 are g is a very tiny number it's a gravitational constant and then r is the distance between their centers and this is what um, students reminded me today about and what the equation is and you've worked some of those problems so what I asked them to do, and we broke off into, into groups, and I asked them to imagine that you um, and somebody else are eating uh, dinner together, and just, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what the masses are and what the distances are, but make it realistic. So imagine you've got a big person and a small person. It's kind of helpful to think about two, two different size masses. So here's my little Lego scuba diver, and then Shmi uh, from uh, Disney's Captain Hook and Peter Pan. And so imagine these guys here are eating dinner together and, you know, maybe Shmi's put on a little weight. And so, you know, we might think that his mass, that big M, is 100 kilograms, say. And he's eating with the, the smallish person and say that little mass and everybody had different values. But, you know, we can say something like 50 kilograms just to make it simple. Okay. And then they're eating together, and, you know, this is not during the coronavirus, we imagine, so they're not sitting, you know, four or five meters apart, but rather maybe they're, they're sitting, you know, who knows, R is 0 0.75 meters. And you can, you can decide if it's half a meter or two meters or something like that, but, you know, they're eating in close proximity. And then I sent them off into little rooms to calculate what the force of gravity is between the two masses. Okay, so... So do that, do that now, and while you're thinking about it, I'm going to draw the big mass here, Shmi. Okay. And I'm going to draw the little mass over here, this little guy. Okay. And this fella here, the big guy, feels the little guy pulling him. Okay, and I'm going to call that the force. Um, of gravity, uh, I'll call that F1, and then the, the little guy feels a force of gravity pulling this way, I'm going to call that F2. Alright, so of course if you, if you do the calculations, we see that F1 is going to equal G times big M times little m over R squared where r is the distance between them. And that, of course, is going to be exactly the same thing as f2. And, of course, this is the universal part of the universal law of gravity, is that, is that the, two, the two masses feel equal forces. f1 is equal to f2 because what in this equation is different from this mass to this mass. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about what that means here in just, a, in just a minute. Okay, And so if you do the calculation... And hopefully you plugged in G into your calculator. All right, so we did that in another video, in another class. So alpha G, and just to make sure it's working, I'm going to do alpha G and hit enter, and lo and behold, there it is. And that G is the same as that G there. Okay, so I'm going to do that again, alpha G. And then big M is 100 times little m is 50. And then you divide by 0.75, and what a lot of people forget is to square that. So 0.75 squared. Well, you probably can't see that, sorry. And also, a lot of people don't know you can just multiply a constant times a number. You, you do not have to put in the times symbol there, although you can. It doesn't hurt. Okay. And so we end up seeing that this is about 6 times 10 to the minus 7 and then the units if we put everything in kilograms and everything is in um, 
is in meters. This is going to be six point about six times ten to the minus seven newtons. And then I asked them in their rooms to tell me which one was bigger, and of course the, the forces are the same on both. And then I asked them to to tell me why, when you eat dinner, do the do you, you and your dinner guest, why don't you slowly move together? Because there is a force acting on you, even though it's small, it's not zero. And why don't you slide in together? And they had some, you know, some thoughts about that. Primarily, it's because of friction. The force of friction is going to be much, much bigger than this. And so we played a little, you know, little game there. And, and we asked, you know, what is a really, really tiny coefficient of, of static friction? And people said something like 0 0.02. You know, that would be a very, very low friction environment. And so then if we wanted to figure out what the force of friction was, if this, if this thing were pulling on it like so, Right, what what would be the maximum force that would make this guy start to move? And of course, um, the force of friction is mu times the normal. So let's take the tiny guy just to make it be the smallest friction possible. 0 0.02, the normal force when he's just sitting down and eating dinner is his mass, which is 50 kilograms, times gravity, 9.80 meters per second squared. And then when we do that calculation, 0 0.02 times 50 times 9.8, we see that it is a force of 9.8 newtons. Okay, and that is, you know, quite large compared to that. In fact, it's it's humongous. It doesn't. This does not mean it's seven times. Uh, smaller, or this is seven times bigger. It means it's seven orders of magnitude bigger. Actually, this is close. This is closer to eight orders of magnitude because this is close to ten. So eight orders of magnitude bigger, which is which is why gravity. We don't even consider gravity in any of these calculations. However, if they were in space, and the force of friction is zero, right? There's nothing slowing them down in space. They would actually come together, and they would. They would hit. We can't solve this problem in this class because we don't have the calculus, but you can see here that as the objects move closer together, the r gets big, or the r gets smaller, and so the force is going to get bigger. Okay, and as the force gets bigger, they're going to move together more and more quickly, and at the end, they're going to start moving faster and faster. Not only that, but they're also moving, they're not starting from rest, and so we have the kinematics to, to deal with, but you have to wait until AP physics to handle that because um, of the changing uh, acceleration. So now that we see that the two forces acting on both masses are equal, the next question is, does that mean that they, um, if they were to, to move towards each other, does that mean that they would move with the same speeds? Would they meet in the middle? If they start on the opposite sides, would they meet in the middle? Would they reach there at the same time? Would they reach... Um, uh, would they be traveling the same speed? Things like that. And even though it's tempting to say that they would travel the same speed because the forces on them are equal, that is true. The fact of the matter is, is that the smallest object is going to accelerate more quickly. Okay, And we can see that if we set up um, you know, Newton's, Newton's law. Let's take, for example, let's take, for example, the little tiny mass here. Okay, So he's being pulled um, one way or the other. But if we add up all of the forces acting on that little mass, it is the mass that's doing the moving times the acceleration. And there's only one force acting if we're in space, right? If we're in space, there's only, there's only one force acting. That would be the force of gravity, okay? And so that's going to be my 6 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. And that's going to be the same for both masses, right? We talked about that. That's going to equal ma. And I'm going to call it MA2. If you want, we can label this as 1 and 2, MA2. Okay. And so we can see that A2 is equal to the force of gravity divided by the little mass, M2. And if we apply the same thing to the big mass, we would see that A1 is equal to the force of gravity, which is the same, same number. But this one is going to be divided by the big mass. 
m1. And so whichever mass is biggest, the acceleration is smallest. Acceleration has an inverse relationship with mass. And so this is why if these guys were literally in space floating around, me would move, but so would the little guy. And in fact, the little guy would move more and they would hit, you know, somewhere over here. Okay. And again, this is a, a problem that we cannot solve in this class because we don't have the calculus. We don't see how the acceleration is going to change. This is, this is a, a, a very typical calculus type problem. But the initial acceleration, this is really the initial acceleration. Of both masses, the little guy is going to have a much bigger initial acceleration than the than the big guy. Okay, and this is Newton's big aha moment, right? When when Newton was sitting around and he was thinking about apples falling, and again, Newton did not think, ah, I've discovered gravity. I've discovered that apples fall. You know, I mean, people have have known that for millennia, right? But what he discovered again is that not only does the little mass fall in a big way, right? And so the force of gravity pulls the apple down. The acceleration of the apple is 9.8 meters per second squared near the Earth. The idea that he came up with, the big aha moment, was not only does the apple fall, but the Earth rises. This force of gravity acting on the apple is the same as the force of gravity acting on the, on the Earth or the planet. However, the acceleration of the Earth is microscopically small, and it's approximately zero. It's not exactly zero, though, and that's the idea, is that as the apple falls, the Earth, as the little tiny apple falls, the big Earth rises to meet the apple. Okay? Again, it's not much. You can't detect it because the apple's so tiny and the Earth is so big. That said, as the, as the moon pulls the earth, the earth pulls the moon, or as the earth pulls the moon, the, the moon pulls the earth, and you can actually see the little wobble of the earth as it goes around the sun, and that's due to the effect of the moon's gravity. Okay.